afternoon, Andreas. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Welcome to uh, Real In Films. And we're going to talk about your short film, uh, Mushka. And I got to say, uh, at the start of the film and until the end, I my emotions were everywhere. But when I got to that, uh, I would say final act, I just couldn't stop crying. It was so, the, the emotions were everywhere. And... Aww. I, I love the animation. It brought me back to, you know, back in the Disney original films. And I was intrigued on how this short film had a different type of like 2D animation itself. Um, we'll go into that a little farther in the interview. But what inspired you to bring Mushka to, to all of us? Well, um, after being uh, on my own for about a year or so, after 30 years at Disney, I, I knew that I needed a, a project, something to get my teeth into, something uh, that I would enjoy working on. And uh, um, I, could have, I could have maybe looked into books and see if I can get rights to a book that already exists, but, but all that sounded too complicated to me. I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and create my own story. So. Then I just asked myself, what do you like drawing most? Well, animals, of course, uh, love drawing animals. And then what kind of animal would be fun to animate that I haven't animated yet? And then I thought, gosh, I really love tigers because of the stripes and the graphic quality of that. And having done Lion King, I had a little bit of experience in how big cats move. So I said, let me do a tiger. And then, then the idea of... Uh, uh, a screen partner of a little girl came to mind because that would be that would be an unusual relationship. There could be some tension, adventure, drama. So I said, "How? What about if she, if this girl raises um, this cub who is an orphan, and then they bond, of course, over time, and then later on, when the tiger is almost fully grown, she finds out that there are some bad folks around them who want to kill the tiger, and um, she wants to save him, of course, from these." people and she takes him back into the forest uh, and uh, ho hopes that he would be a real uh, like a wild tiger from then on but maybe things don't go according to plan but kind of that's all I had and and then uh, I would I knew I needed some help to flesh that idea out into a story that would have a middle beginning and an end so I asked a friend of mine who, who has much more experience in writing and he fleshed out the story and uh, wrote me this screenplay that I really really liked and so then we started storyboarding that and animating it. That's that's amazing. Um, so, Andreas, was Mushka animated uh, by yourself or that you had a team working with you? Uh, I had a small team. Uh, it was a tiny team, actually. Uh, but most of the animation that was done by, by me. And that's why the, the production time took so long is mainly because we only had a small team. Okay. But it made it that much more personal to me because... Um, I have so much animation in this, so, uh, you know, like it or not, uh, I'm, I'm to blame, you know. Uh, I came to finger pointing here because I, I did so, so much work on it. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's that much more of a personal statement that way. Okay. Um, I wanted to, to ask you because in, in this case, uh, this is your directorial debut so you directed Mushka as well. Well, like you mentioned, you did. Um, uh, you were a major part of the animation. But how does it feel that uh, from being an animator and as well supervising other animations that you've worked on as well? How does it feel that you transitioned from being an animator to a uh, to a director? Yeah, it was a little scary at first because uh, I didn't know. I mean, I knew all the steps that were involved, and I had, of course, observed over the years what directors and what animation directors are doing, you know, you know, how they work with the story people, how they work with the voice actors and the uh, musicians and, and all of that. So I knew I would have to do the same thing. I would have to, to work uh, uh, and be involved in every phase of filmmaking, not just the animation. And, uh, and I, just, I just surrounded myself with people who were good at what, what they're doing, like Natalie, uh, her full name is Natalie Franschioni Carp. She became the, the main background painter and, and really painted most of the backgrounds herself. Uh, 
So you had pillars, you know, on this movie that carried a big load. So it was small crew, but everybody was super talented and 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 important. Yeah, and then you find yourself directing uh, recording sessions with the actors who came in. Uh, we, we did everything here at my home studio, you know. Uh, so there was no no other place. And um, and you uh, involved in choosing colors, in of course developing the story. I co storyboarded the film. Uh, you are just involved in all aspects of it, and it just it, it has been uh, like a long ride, but a really fun one. That that's amazing. So uh, the other the other thing is that I did notice uh, doing a little bit much much more research uh, behind who Andreas is and what Mushka comes in. You got nominated as a uh, best animated short. Uh, I don't I don't recall the the festival, but you got nominated. How did how did it feel that Mushka got nominated? I think you might have been thinking about the Palm Springs. Yes. Shortcuts coming up. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to be there on Saturday showing our film as part of a program. Well, it feels it feels fantastic because that means like uh, uh, people, some people really enjoy the film, and uh, obviously you do your film for audiences, and you hope that the, the film connects, you know, and to see that happen is just super satisfying. That that's great. One other one other thing that I did, um, and me personally, you know, I come from. Uh, a time where 2D animation was still prominent. And uh, I remember sitting down watching The Lion King, watching Little Mermaid. And I was uh, part of that transition from being from 2D animation. And now we everything is done on CG. Uh, how did it affect you when that transition started coming in when Toy Story uh, became a major hit? in theaters? Well, I, um, I, I looked into what's involved in, in CG filmmaking, and uh, I learned a little bit about uh, the kind of program that is used, but I, I realized very early on that I, I just like drawing too much. I, I, that, that's just who I am, you know? I, I love drawing. I, I love moving drawings on the screen. I like, the, you know, building whole characters withdrawing so I really decided that I wanted to 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 stay in that medium and uh, I, I, I do respect of course CG they do incredible things and uh, um, things that you can't do in 2D but there's always something very sentimental about 2D the, the whole idea and the tradition of of drawings and the audience knows that these, that these are drawings but but nevertheless they believe that these are also real personalities with feelings you know and that it's just a really, there's just a magic to that. And through my film, I, I want to remind people that uh, it, it's still being done. It, it can still be, be, be done, you know, where you, where, you, where you have that art form uh, uh, still doing another step. This, this time in a bit of a sketchy way, I wanted to, I didn't want to have a, a very slick uh, art direction where everything is rendered, looks real. Uh, that's what CG is so great at. I, I wanted to step back and really show this almost as an unfinished sketch in the character drawings as well as the background because that that aspect really fascinated me. Yeah, uh, that's one of the things that I wanted to touch up on. But uh, thanks for for mentioning it. I did notice that on Mushka, you know, it does feel like it, it's like a continuous drawing that it's still like unfinished but finished at the same time and it has that very personal aspect to it. I wanted to ask um, as well if you have like a great moment while you were creating Mushka that you, you know, that you keep at heart. Um, and it's just a memory that you will never forget. Yeah. Um, there's a piece of uh, a sequence in there. If you remember, uh, I call it the montage sequence where we see Sarah and the tiger cup bonding. And by the end of the sequence, he's a big tiger, you know, and um, I, I, and for that sequence, I can take full credit for, for the storytelling as well, because uh, he, people who, who helped me with the story had no idea what to do there. You know, we were going to have this, this song, this Richard Sherman song, but being hummed, la, 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 you know, it wasn't be sung, but hummed, which I think works really well. But what should happen in that sequence as that bond, nobody really knew. And then I just sat down and thought about it, thought about it, and I said, I know. 
I'm going to show the contrast between being with a tiger cub and being with a adult, almost adult tiger. I'm going to I'm going to push the uh, difference between those two. Same situations, feeding, sleeping in the same bed, you know, or uh, playing, uh, all of that. Uh, but uh, uh, having an A moment and then a B moment uh, with a large tiger. And uh, I think that added a little comedy and sweetness to it. Uh, and then in the end, we get to the point where they cuddle up for the, for the night and the tiger turns around and kicks her out of bed, you know, because now he's this big, big, gigantic beast. Uh, so uh, I was really, I was really proud of that because that was the one time where I was completely responsible for the storytelling in, in that particular sequence. So Andreas, I wanted to ask you because at at the at the end of the short, um, I I left myself with a question. I know that uh, just to make sure that we don't give that much uh, details of it, but in the end, there is a major roar. By any chance, is it um our lovely small club? It is Mushka. Okay. Yeah, I, I was like, I, I, I was, I was just thinking about it all this time. Like, can it be or can it not be? You know, just wanted to, you know, ask that question. So, Andres, one uh, another thing that I wanted to ask you is, recently, um, I got to see a documentary, uh, called Pencils versus Pixels, mm -hmm. and um, I did remember that you are part of it. You do uh, give a couple of words in that uh, documentary. Um, when you did that, when you did that documentary or were part of it, uh, were you working on Mushka in, in that, in that process? Yes, I was. That, that wasn't so long ago. Uh, I think I gave my interview a year ago or something like that, maybe even less. Uh, so it's not, it's not that long ago. The, the production of this documentary has been, um, they've been working on it for quite a bit longer. And then I, I think it found new leadership and they took the old material, mixed it with some new, I actually haven't seen it yet. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it, but yeah, I was still working on Mushka. Okay. Um, is there, uh, what is something that you would say to uh, future animators or to future artists that um, to this day, want to pursue uh, pursue 2D animation, uh, what are some words that you would give them or advice um, when they take this route? I would tell them the same thing that uh, the Disney Studios wrote me in a letter because I had, that, I had the same question. When I was about 11 or 12 years old, I, I sent them a letter with the question, what can I do to prepare myself to sometime work at Disney Studios as an animator? And it really hasn't changed over the years. Uh, uh, it doesn't even matter if you want to do 2D or stop motion or CG. If you spend some time uh, drawing and learning how to draw well, it's such an important tool because you're being able then then you're being able to sketch something very quickly and spontaneously. Uh, even your CG character, you know, before you start animating that character, you can you can do like certain poses that you might want to go through, you know, and uh, it's spontaneous and it'll help you with the final animation. So, yeah, I think learning how to draw and having a knowledge of how animals are put together and of course humans as well, the human figure, it's, it's just a good thing to, to know and to have that kind of a tool so you, you, can, you can apply it to your work, you know, no matter what the medium is. I, because it also, tells you or shows other people that you will have time. You will have spent time observing. And observation is everything in animation because you, you, you use your observations in interpreting a character or a, a, a scene, you know. It's, it, it should come from real, real life, you know. So when, when you draw, that's what you do, you observe. So yeah, if you do have time, uh, draw, learn, learn how to draw and learn how to draw well. That that's amazing. So Andreas wanted to uh one final question and it's because I'm very curious about it. So out of all of your career, you've worked a long time with Disney. Is there one Disney film that you worked on that it's like your all time favorite is the most fun that you had um working on? 
difficult thing to answer, difficult question to answer. Um, there was one film that was really important to me that kind of broke me loose as an animator. And uh, I got a lot of stiffness out of the way in terms of drawing and animating. And I think my animation really changed after that. And there was Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Um, it was difficult to combine, of course, the drawn characters with the live actors. That's a whole other topic. But the animation itself was supposed to be very cartoony, not realistic necessarily, very surreal. And to do that kind of a looseness for a whole year, uh, that old Hollywood cartoon animation, it really loosens you up as an animator because you're using the, the, the rules of animation like squash and stretch and other things very, very forcefully. And uh, because my next character after I did Roger was uh, King Triton in The Little Mermaid. And I think he feels the way he does. And it, it, I, I think he's portrayed in, in a somewhat loose way, natural way. And I think I wouldn't have had that result hadn't I done Roger Rabbit. Oh, that, that's amazing. Now, Andreas, wanted to, to know, are there any upcoming projects? Are we going to see more of Mushka when you um, do this uh, festival run? Well, uh, Mushka is done, and uh, uh, I think I'm going to leave it alone, I think, uh, as it is, because I think it works in the format that it's at, like 28 and a half minutes. Uh, and distribution will probably follow uh, uh, at, a, at a certain time. I'm thinking also about maybe my, my next project, which would be something smaller, like a seven minute film. And that one will be all comedy. It'll be, it'll be heartfelt and have sentiment as, as well, but it'll be also funny. Okay. That's amazing, Andreas. Andreas, I just got to say, thank you very much for giving us the time to talk about Mushka. Um, where can the people find you in social media? Uh, there is, uh, Mushka is on Instagram and uh, I think on Twitter. We also have a Mushka website. If you look for Mushka the film, it takes you to the website where you find out background uh, information, photos, making of, and the trailer, of course, is on that website, but the trailer is also on YouTube. Uh, it's easy to find. And I would really appreciate if you do see the, the trailer, if you have any thoughts or comments in the comment section, uh, comment section, because I, I, I really love reading those comments. Okay. Thank you very much, Andreas, for giving us the time to talk about Mushka. For everybody that's watching us here at Reeling Films, we're going to have the trailer down below. So don't forget to comment your thoughts about the trailer and when um, the film is available, we will keep you up to date on our website. Thank you very much, Andreas, for giving us the time. Thank you for talking to me. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.